What's going on, Spurs fans? It's Ethan Quintero here, back for our third episode, I believe, a third recap Mm -hmm. of a San Antonio Spurs game. It is April 7th, 2021. We just finished the game against the um, Denver Nuggets, an unfortunate loss for the Spurs again. Jude, I'm getting a little bit tired of covering these (laughs) losses for the Spurs. So, Well, go ahead. My bad. No, I was going to say, go ahead and tell me what you thought of the game. Okay, well, first of all, to be honest, we've been out for a little bit, um, and that's just because, you know, Easter weekend, and, you know, we have mm-hmm. our, like we like we said in the trailer, you know, we're college kids, we have some other priorities that we have to get to, um, but, you know, we're going to get to every game we can, so we're back. And in the last 11 games, I believe, I could be, this could be a little bit off, one or two W's or L's off, but from my understanding, the Spurs are 8-11. and 11 in their last or or their they've had eight losses in their last 11 games i said eight and 11 that didn't make sense but (laughs) they've had eight losses in their last 11 games so that would actually make them in the last 11 games three and eight three and eight yeah so that's just fantastic you know that's that's gonna that's gonna make the playoffs in the west um (laughs) but no dude i don't so tonight's game obviously um Usually whenever Derek White goes to Colorado, he usually has a a good game and he Mm -hmm. started off hot in this one. To be honest, also, my streams were so bad tonight. They were cutting in and out. I was having to switch to all of them. So like I I missed parts of the games. Yeah, Adam Silver was on that. He was like, I see you streamers. You're not going to watch this (laughs) for free. I don't care if YouTube TV screwed you out of a Bally sports contract, but yeah, and at the end of the game, uh, he was the leading scorer. Or actually, I guess he was tied with DeJounte there, um, but was a little bit more efficient, even though he still went one for seven from three. That's yeah. something that, you know, we're waiting to get more consistent on with Derek. Um, but once again, you know, this was kind of a close game. Going into the fourth, there was still that little run at the end of the third, which you didn't like, you know, going in there. You wanted to hold the lead that you had in the third. And then you just get completely blown out in the fourth. But, you know, I'm not even mad at the Spurs, like, in this game, Ethan, because it's the Nuggets. Like, and yeah, I get that Jamal Murray wasn't playing, but Michael Porter Jr. has been playing phenomenal lately. He had 18 and 10 tonight. Aaron Gordon was added to this roster. That just makes it easier for everybody else. And Jokic is an MVP candidate. So this team's better than the Spurs, like, in my opinion, even without Jamal Murray, they're just better than the Spurs. So, like, you getting blown out in the fourth quarter isn't very surprising to me. And that kind of stems in to the lineups. It's just, like, what we're doing right now and what we've been doing in this past 11 games or whatever, I, it may be longer than that, is we're staggering Patty Mills and Rudy Gay with, like, different lineups. So, like, sometimes, like, I saw one lineup, it was, like, Rudy Gay, Patty Mills, Devin Vassell, DeJounte Murray – and like Gorgie Jang or, or something. Mm-hmm. Why, what is the idea of that lineup? Why is DeJounte Murray like not like he should be on the floor with Derek, Derek White and Keldon Johnson 90% of the time, in my opinion. And we were doing that at the beginning of the year. Like that's what was happening. And I don't mean to mm-hmm. go off on a rant. I know we've only got no, no, so much good. time, but like, we were doing that at the beginning of the year and that's when we were successful. And then now we're staggering Patty Mills and Rudy Gay in these like lineups. And yeah, I know we've got some injuries, but like that wasn't happening before. Like I've even seen some where it's Patty Mills, Rudy Gay, DeMar DeRozan, Derek White, you know, like just something like, I don't know why we're staggering these dudes, like play our best dudes together and play Patty Mills and Rudy Gay off the bench. Like, and I know they're technically coming off the bench, but I even noticed today when I looked at the box score, just coming into the game, like early in the first quarter, that there was a point where literally there were only two people that had come off the bench and it was those two. So they're mixing them in with the starters. And that is just, that's like defeating the whole purpose of going to small ball, like in this youth movement in the, in the, in the starting lineup. And the fact that they've kind of cooled down as the season has progressed, I mentioned due to this and I'll say it the same way. Um, as we talked earlier, when you throw in inefficient shooters that don't play good defense, like, and you're playing the nuggets, like bad things are going to happen. I don't like, look, I've said this before. I'm not, a you know, even though I'm criticizing Popovich and the coaches right now, those people know more than basketball, more about basketball than I ever will in my entire life. 
But at the same time, from my perspective as a fan watching this, I'm like, what is, why is this happening? Because I feel like ever since we've started doing that, like things slow down, the offense is less efficient, and we don't play as good defense as if we're playing like all of those guys. And so I guess maybe the injuries are the reason, but like you can still play Devin Vassell, Patty Mills, Rudy Gay. And if you want to keep DeMar in, you can play him with those guys. And then we, we talked about that before mm -hmm. and put in Gorgie Jang or, or Drew Eubanks or, or whatever you want to do. Like, but don't put those guys in with the young guys and like defeat the whole purpose of, of their strengths. I agree with you. And I have two points to add on to what you just said. And I think Popovich is trying to force Patty and Rudy into this Manu Ginobili role. Because Manu did that, where he would come off the bench and basically just become a part of the starting lineup. You know, mm -hmm. he came off the bench, but he was a starter. You know, I don't think Rudy or Patty are good enough. There's no knock against them. They're not Manu Ginobili. So you can't treat them the same way. And another thing I saw is when they do put Rudy and Patty in a lineup with, say, DeMar DeRozan or DeJounte Murray or one of these guys that is like our prolific number one option or number two option, they still run the offense through Patty and Rudy. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yes, exactly. That's that's the main thing. I thank you for saying that, Ethan, because that was the main thing that I forget and forgot my whole rant. We're like setting up Rudy Gay for mid-range jumpers mm -hmm. with DeMar DeRozan in the corner. Yeah, and there's what no point to having DeMar out there in the corner. <laughs> no, I know. You're not going to give him the ball. You might as well take DeMar out of the out of the game because he's yeah. not an off-ball guy. We've got Keldon Johnson who can like run to the rim and like run through basically anybody in the NBA other than maybe a few players. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, we're gonna we're gonna set up we're gonna set up Rudy Gay for a contested mid-range jump shot. That that seems like a great idea. Or Patty Mills is cold. We're gonna give him the ball and we're gonna have him, you know, isolation on the left wing and pull up in somebody's pay, face from thirty feet and then it breaks. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Yeah. The play should be drawn up for Demar and Dejounte and Keldon, and then Patty and Rudy can score off they're, of those plays. Floor spacers. Yeah, they're fillers. They're not the main guys, and I don't know why we keep giving them the ball. In key situations where there's clearly other options. Because they're veterans, I guess. Like, that's Pop's thing. Like, oh, they're veterans. Like, I, I don't, dude, I don't care about that, bro. Yeah. I'd rather have Lucas Samanich out there. I'm going to be completely honest with you. He missed a layup today. It looked embarrassing. I'd rather play him than Rudy Gay because we're not going to win a championship. Yeah. We're not, like, we're not winning a championship this year. Anyways. You know what's funny? Three players off the bench – five total that but three players off the bench had a positive plus minus some people don't like this statistic i mm -hmm. actually like this statistic but it was lucas ominous she had a plus seven and then tyus jones and quindary weatherspoon both had plus seven i know they they played like chump change minutes but rudy gay was minus 22 and patty mm -hmm. mills is minus 29 like that where was where was devin at where was devin Vassell at devin was at minus nine Mm -hmm. And to be fair to Devin, all he did tonight was basically play defense yeah, and then miss a couple pull-up jumpers. Um, because the offense is terrible and yeah, we he's just, not playing the role that he should be anyways. Honestly, Devin should get a lot more of the shots that Patty is getting. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Patty gets a lot of those coming off of a screen, you know, running out from under the basket, like basket, like Reggie Miller mm -hmm. type three-pointers. That That's Devin's game. Like we should really try and get him a couple more of those instead of relegating him to corner yeah. threes and like, like he gets scared and shoots a mid range. Mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And, and, and he does his best to martyr an impression on the elbow. Like <sighs> that's another thing I'm worried about. <laughs> We're getting a little bit off topic from the game with this comment, but I'm scared that our young guys, particularly DeJounte and Devin are trying too much, too hard to be DeMar. Like, I feel like their games have subtly kind of, I don't want to say permanently, but I think they're, they're trying to be DeMar DeRozan and how they try and score the basketball sometimes when, mm -hmm. when I don't know. they're not DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. I mean, DeMar <laughs> is good at it because that's really all DeMar does. He's perfected that's, that's that. That's what he's done his entire life. Yes. Yeah. Like his entire career, that's been his game. But like, yeah, it's not like usually it's not like the great, like not everybody's going to be able to do like probably the only guy who can do what 
DeMar can do like driving to the rim when it comes to like acrobatic layups is like Lonnie. That's probably the only person on the roster who can really do that. Like DeJounte yeah. has done it a little bit, but like he still doesn't have as much like DeJounte is a really athletic player. Like, let me preface that before I say this, but like specifically going to the rim and like adjusting his body midair. Um, Lonnie is a lot better at that. So. Yeah. And speaking of attacking in the basket tonight, I want to say Derek did very well attacking the basket, at least until like midway through the third quarter when everything started falling apart. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, when he was attacking, he was doing very well. It was what he was trying to make his three pointer fall that, you know, he was clanking them off the back iron and Mm -hmm. he just couldn't find the deep ball. But as far as attacking tonight, he was very good. And DeJounte was surprisingly our best three point shooter. He was 50%. And surprisingly, after he hit those two, what did Pop do? He, he pulled, pulled him out of the game. Yeah, because he's an idiot. Anyways. <laughs> Jude's hot tonight. Jude is hot I don't, tonight. Dude, no, this these past like 11 games, like I'm really like looking at like everything. And I don't know. This may be a complete overreaction. Maybe in two weeks they're on an 11 game win streak and I'm wrong. But I'll admit that. Mm-hmm. But as of right now, dude, this does not give me a warm fuzzy at all like these past couple games it doesn't to me it doesn't seem like we're in a slump it seems like something is very very wrong Mm -hmm. like it seems like we've changed the way that we've played from earlier in the season we've changed up lineups we've changed up the routine that was giving us success and now we're having our longest lose we're having our toughest stretch of the season now we're below 500 that's what happened that's what happens since we have done this. We're below 500. And guess what, everybody? We've got the second hardest schedule in the NBA coming up. So if Pop wants to keep being, you know, Mr. I know it all, and no matter, you know, I'm going to play my vets and all this stuff, then you can you can kick yourself right out of the playoffs by doing that. Can Continue to do that. If, if you want to miss the playoffs, keep 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 playing the lineups that you want to. I don't know. Maybe there's a chance Lonnie Walker comes in and fixes everything, but – I just don't see that happening. I see him helping out a lot, but I don't know if the, like if Lonnie Walker is really the answer, then we just devalued him and underestimated, you know, what he does that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. But as of right now, man, the, changing up these lineups and running the offense through Patty Mills and Rudy Gay is, is going to lead to uh, a recipe for disaster. I agree. I agree 100%. And maybe we did undervalue Lonnie. I don't think we undervalued him this much though, but a couple of key stats I want to mention. Uh, We were out rebound tonight by 11. That wasn't necessarily surprising when Mm -hmm. the Nuggets have guys like Jokic and McGee and Jermichael Green, just really athletic bigs snagging those boards. We were really undersized tonight. When Mm -hmm. you have 6'10", 6'11", Michael Porter Jr. guarding 6'5", Keldon Johnson at the four spot, you know, that that just shows you. And another thing, 21% from three tonight. Mm -hmm. That is I got, go ahead. horrible. Sorry, I was just going to say that's no, like – you're good. You're that's good. not even excusable. That's not like a bad shooting night. That's just like – I don't even know what that is, 21%. We had multiple dudes go like over from the three-point line tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, we had three of them. Another thing, pick Drew Eubanks or Gorgie Jang. I think the reason Drew Eubanks came in was because Gorgie hurt himself again. Oh, my God. Because I, I saw the see, see my streams were staggering, so yeah. I may have I may have missed that. He he tried to block a shot with his whichever arm is like kind of hurt, and then he, as soon as he did, okay. he like came down. He was like, ooh, like he was like grabbing it and wincing. So they pulled right. him out. He, but you that was him. that was what he hurt before. Yes, yes. When the guy like landed so, on his shoulder. Ethan, how many times has Corky Jang got hurt since we signed him? Twice, Jude. Twice. How how at, when was he signed? Uh, like what? 15 days ago maybe like in a matter of in a matter of two weeks he's only played three that. games yeah he's gotten hurt twice okay great signing guys yeah um, uh, no, i don't no really to Gorgi, but i was hoping he would play a lot better than he is but i don't know why like honestly drew eubanks in my opinion is better the only thing drew does he's do more is... athletic He's much more athletic and he's a spark mm-hmm. plug. He's probably, I think he's a he better defender. He doesn't get injured every two weeks. Yeah. And Gorgie was 0 for 3 tonight, or 0 for 2 from 3. Yeah. Like the whole reason we got, and one of those shots wasn't just like, it was it bad. Was I bad. saw <laughs> it. was yeah, like off it was, the left side it of the was backboard. A straight brick. Yeah. Dude. 
I mean, uh, I hope he does better. I don't want to wish badly on him. We signed him. I hope he you know, proves me wrong. He goes three for three next game. But honestly, I would rather play Drew at this point. Yeah. You know, I saw I'll, I'll leave it off with this and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the Friday podcast. We'll go a little bit more in depth with all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kevin O'Connor for the ringer. And I'm not even a big ringer guy, to be honest. Like, I don't I don't have anything against them. I just like there are some people I know that are like super into the ringer and I don't really pay attention to them that much. But I I happen to see it on Twitter and he wrote this column about how like doing his NBA power rankings. And in the last one, he had the Spurs at 13. So like he, he gave the Spurs respect. Mm-hmm. and now he has them at 23 and the headline was the Spurs should have blown it up. And maybe that's not, like I said, maybe that's an overreaction. Maybe we need to wait a little bit. There's still a lot of season left, but once again, we've got to remember that the Spurs, the Spurs haven't played the Suns yet. Okay. And, and there are a lot of other highly ranked teams in the West that the Spurs haven't played yet. Once again, they have the second hardest like schedule in the league left um, out of all the teams. I forget like what that ranking is, but you can go out and find that. Okay. And he was just talking about how in like in crunch time, Patty Mills and Rudy Gay are out there taking contested jump shots and Keldon Johnson is sitting on the bench when he's only played 26 minutes. And I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Very deep thoughts to think about (laughs) as we move out of this recap and into our Friday podcast this Friday. Uh, Let's just see what happens when Lonnie Walker comes back. And if yep. after four games or so, we haven't improved at all, we keep falling apart, put our young guys in. We're probably not going to sign DeMar back anyway. Let's just see what we got just, with our youth. Can they buy out? Can They can buy out late, right? I guess they could. I don't know why we would. Mm-hmm. I mean – If we keep losing, if we keep losing, I honestly – I'm for I'm for halfway through the rest of this schedule – Buying out DeMar DeRozan, Patty Mills, and Rudy Gay. Wow. Good that would shake up the NBA, bro. That would okay. shake up the NBA. Mm-hmm. Who knows where DeMar, DeMar would Imagine probably land in the, the DeMar, Lakers. Yeah, DeMar, DeMar signs a minimum to go play with the Lakers. Honestly, I feel like DeMar would totally <laughs> oh, do that. Oh, he would do that. He would want to beat Kawhi, too. Or maybe the Mavs. Yeah. Mm, good food for know. thought, Jude. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. Thanks for watching everybody on this game recap of the San Antonio Spurs versus Denver Nuggets. Please like, and subscribe, drop a comment below. Let us know what we're doing wrong, what we could do better. And Mm -hmm. you know what? Have a great day. Yes. Go Spurs go. (laughs) Go Spurs go.